Hey guys, it's your girl, Everything is TV. And um, so I'm gonna come on here and talk to y'all right quick because I need to put out some content. When my phone got stolen, I, I couldn't put no content out, y'all. That's why I wasn't putting any content out because I didn't have my phone. But what I wanted to come on here and actually talk about is why a lot of black women are failing in these relationships with these men. And I'm going to tell y'all why y'all are failing in these relationships. The first thing is that a lot of black women, you guys won't date outside the race. And some, and a lot of y'all that do, black women that do date outside the race, y'all are dating the wrong men. Y'all are dating those white boys that act like black men. And I told y'all before, you can't do it like that because you're going to get the same results. You give it up too fast. If, if, if Let me tell you something. If a man meets you and you give it up too fast, he ain't got nothing else to look forward to. Um, it hurts. It hurts when you think somebody really love you. Especially when you had sex with them. And then you find out they want no good. So, you know, he done got your drawers. And he's on to the next. You got to be able to bring something more to a table. If all you have to bring is your body, you're going to get used. You got to be able to stimulate a man's mind. If you can't do that, you're going to forget it. Because he's just going to eat you. But watch who clean your leg. And as soon as he does. He's going to be gone. And then you're going to continue to go down the same road of same bullshit men. Over and over and over and over again. And you you just going to get tired of it. You're going to be like, what am I doing? What am I doing? I keep I don't want to date outside my race, but I, I, you know, I want some women, black women want to be with black men. But they just keep getting the same knuckleheads over and over again. But they said, and it's true, a lot of black women are race loyal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I mean, if you don't explore your option, and you say, But you ain't getting nowhere with these black men. Why waste? Why keep wasting your time? I told you it's just like shopping in a store. When you in the store shopping, don't you take your time? You don't rush it. You take your time. You look through the clothes. A lot of you only shop um 
brain clue. Like a lot of y'all won't wear Walmart. Y'all want the new the, those brands. Y'all want Calvin Klein. What's some other brands? H and M. What? I used to shop at H&M, but after they did that sweater, you all know where they had that sweater where the black boy sweater said, cool as monkey in the jungle. And the little white boy said, like, um, that naturalist um survivalist or something i stopped shopping there i'll never shop there again but yeah if you pick it's just like you buy a parachute Maybe you bought a cheap pair of shoes and they squeak. And you don't buy them no more. You know. If you go back and buy them, what? They're going to squeak. So if you keep messing with the same type of dudes, you're going to get the same type of results. Somebody's going to use you. Use you for what's between your legs. And then they're going to go get somebody else. Because I told you, women women love to compete against other women. There you go. So if you tell the new woman, oh, I love her, she will whack. They're going to do everything in their power. They're going to give it up to them, huh? Because you got women out here that's just like men. They just want to sleep. A lot of women, you got a lot of women that just want to sleep around. They don't want to get married. They don't want to do nothing. You got some women don't even want to have kids. They just want to sleep around. Yeah, but it's emotional when... Especially when you, um, especially when you introduce the person, like, to your family and stuff, and your friends and stuff, and then you found out they was whacked the whole time. Look right here. No, you gotta be strong with relationship because a relationship can eat you up. It can make you depressed. It can mess you up mentally. It's bad. And I feel, I feel sorry. I feel bad for a lot of, um, not just black women. But I feel bad for all women, but I feel most bad for black women because I'm a black woman. I feel bad when they say they can't find nobody and all the men are messed up, which I believe ain't true. You're just picking the wrong ones. It can cause you embarrassment.
Especially if you're talking about, oh, he's done. He's great. Your friend the third, and then it don't work out. You know what I'm like, girl? Girl, where did it do? And then you have to tell him, oh, it didn't work out. And especially, it's embarrassing. Uh, it's just dude after dude after dude. And then your friends start looking at you like, dang. You can't keep no man. And you just like... Well, it ain't me. But, um... I mean, my advice... For women... I mean, there's nothing... I would tell you to explore more options. That's all I can tell you. Because if you're going to sit there and date the same exact men... You're going to get the same result. Just like if you go date a Chinese dude. There's a lot of Chinese men that are ghetto. <laughs> yes. There's a lot of Chinese men that are really ghetto. And if you go towards that, you're going to get the same result. They're going to act like black men. They're going to treat you like crap. I'm not saying all black men treat um, women like crap. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying there's a lot of majority of black men. They treat um, all women like crap. Now he's going to do the same thing. And you're going to be crying down. I'm like, oh, I thought it was going to work. I thought he was lying. You don't want to give nobody else no chance. No, I gotta have a black man. I have to. I can't do it. And it might be with a lot of, um, you know, black women that. They're not really used to having, you know, intellectual conversations. But maybe you might meet a dude. And I'm not trying to say that black men are not intellectual. It's a shame that I have to keep saying that. Because people come on here, oh, you calling all black men stupid. No, I'm not. It's a shame I had to say that. I'm going to stop saying that and just say what the hell I want to say. But you might find a dude, and he might, like, really be intelligent. Like, he might read book, and you going to have a conversation with him. And he's talking, and he, he start talking about an author, and you just looking at him like, what is he talking about? I don't know that author. And then he asks you, oh, I'm sorry, do you know that author? No. Every time I ask you something, no, no, no. Mm. Let's come on. If you ask a lot of a lot of women, if they're honest, a lot of black women. Do the do the uh husbands or boyfriend read, and I'm not talking just one book. I'm talking about like read books daily. They'll probably tell you no. But there definitely needs to be more reading in the black community. I 
And I can't understand what people are like. Um, well, they always seem to talk about the basketball or football players. They're like, oh, well, such and such. He didn't go to college and he made it. But if you ever listen to some of them, like some of those football people or some of them basketball players, actually listen how they speak. They don't speak intelligent at all. You just like, what did he say? Like you, I could be like, yeah, I know he didn't go to college. Yeah, I can tell he didn't go to college. Mm-hmm. I can tell he didn't go to college. You know what I'm saying? Just listen how they talk. Listen to a lot of them how they talk. You can tell, yeah. You can tell a lot of them didn't go to college. Some of them didn't even finish high school, and you can tell. So I don't know why they sitting there, you know, bragging about these football players and these basketball players that didn't finish high school or didn't go to college. That's not nothing to brag about. Because a lot of people sit there and laugh talking about, yeah, we know he didn't go to college. Look at how he talks. So, oh, so this is the last thing I'm going to talk about. Oh, no. Um, I can get off of here. So I seen this video. Do I want to talk about? No, I'm gonna talk about that later. About the sesame, um, sesame place. I'm. That's gonna be in another video. Yeah, but what, what um, if you're a black woman and you dated black men and you dated all kinds of men and you still saying that you can't you're not finding the right one that's because you're dating the wrong ones. You're probably dating those same dudes that are losers just like the last man you dated. It, it, I'm telling you, that's how it is. I'm telling you, you can't you can't go you can't leave a black dude and then go over here to maybe an Asian dude or a Spanish dude, Mexican dude or whatever that acts black. You're going to get the same freaking result. It never fails. They're not going to be any different. They're going to give you the same bull crap that you was getting from the black dude. Because that's just the mindset. It's, it's, it's a mindset. Just like the... the um. People that always talk about they poor don't never have no money. Oh, I don't have money for this. Oh, I don't have money for this bill. This, that, and that. If you keep saying that, that's all you're going to get. I know it's hard, but you try to stay positive. Even when you're getting all these bills and you you basically living paycheck to paycheck, you got to still be positive. You got to be positive, positive all the time. That's why I try to instill in my husband, stay positive, stop saying, oh, I don't have this, oh, I don't, oh, it's another bill, I'm tired of this, I'm tired of that. Well, if you're tired of it, stop talking about it. Start talking positivity, you know. 
just be like that bill is going to be already paid that bill is already paid that bill is going to already be paid that bill all the bills going to already be paid it is what it is they going to already be paid that's just what it is but you can't mope around talking about oh I ain't got money for this and I ain't got money for that you, man you just got to get if, if you in tune like me I'm in tune with my energy I don't know about everybody else but I'm in tune with it it took me a long time a long time to get in tune with my energy and how to use it and how to use it and get what I wanted out of life. And when I did that, I got everything I wanted out of life. I'm telling you. Because seeing is believing. You got to see it. You got to see everything for it to come into focus. <laughs> if you can't see how you, it's going to come into focus. You got to see it. That's why I have my vision board. And everything so far on my vision board. Let me see. One. The house. I have a house on my vision board. And now I'm moving into a three bedroom house. <laughs> me and my husband. Okay. I got a lead role in the, um, it was like a theater play for like a church, but I got the lead role. That was, that was, that's on my vision board. Getting a Grammy is on my vision board. Like everything I set out to do and to accomplish is on that freaking vision board. I'm telling you, and if 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 I look at it every freaking day, every freaking day I look at my vision board, everything that's on there. Try it. Just try it one day. Take 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 a piece of cardboard. Get a magazine and anything you see on there. Cut it out. And paste it on the vision board and look at it every day. Put affirmations on there. I'm determined. I'm dependable. I'm rich. I'm a savior. Whatever you want to put on there, put it on there. And I promise you, it will never fail you. It will never fail you. You know what I'm saying? If you haven't seen The Secret, of all the, they had uh, Bob Proctor on there. I think they had Oprah on there too, but it was just all these millionaires talking about um, the attraction, the law of attraction, and how if you continue to stay negative and negative and negative all day, that's all you're gonna get in your life is negativity, negativity. If you stay positive and positive and positive and positive, all you're gonna start to see is positive things coming in your life, and it's just gonna grow and grow like a big flower. You gotta stop saying, "Oh, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I hate it here. I hate it here." When you say stuff like that, the universe just be like, "Oh, okay, so." I'm going to just keep you there because you're not saying anything. I, I can't do nothing with negative. The universe cannot do anything with negativity but give it back to you. That's how it is, guys. The universe cannot do anything negative but give it right on back to you. But positivity, it can work with that. It can work with that. It's just how the universe is. It can work with that. So if you, I'm telling you, do do what I'm telling you to do, guys. Because now, like this, I told I, I even I even um made a video for you guys about um you know the things in this neighborhood that I didn't like, like the loud music, the neighbors being loud, and um. It seems like <laughs> it seems like the closer we get to moving out, the worser that is getting here. You know, they playing music twelve. I think um the night before they were playing music like eleven o'clock. Yeah, eleven PM. 
like why would you play music that late at night and you know people are sleeping they just have no freaking respect for anybody those are those are spanish people they from um i think they're from um brazil or belize or something like that but i'm telling you they're just as bad as those thugs like those ghetto people they're the same way they're no different they're the same way and um you know, like sometimes when sometimes the cars ride down, the the system just be so loud. And it's I, I've I've heard some good systems. Like I'm not saying that booming systems are are trash, but the ones that, that <laughs> these people have are trash. I seen some good systems. Those systems that don't have a lot of basin and they really spent. They really um they got some high tech you know, systems, high tech systems, not that old boom, boom, boom. And then you hear the whole car shake. That's trash. Those are trash systems. But I'm telling you, um, the closer we get to moving out here, the worse it gets, the worse it gets. So I'm definitely have to praise God. Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you so much for for just getting us around the, the right people getting us around the right people because you got to surround yourself around the white people because if you don't have the right people around you sometimes you can't get into certain stuff if if you if you if you don't have the right people like there's a lot of things in this world if like I was reading up on film directors celebrity assistance a lot of those um those jobs you have to actually know somebody somebody actually has to recommend you so you have to make your own portfolio and hope you bump it you got to socialize with people that's how you're gonna get into them type of jobs but man i'm telling you <laughs> i mean if you somewhere in your life and you don't want to be i'm telling you i just told you what to do I just told you what to do, man. I just told you what to do, cause like a, a lot of like those um those people, you can wish that they move, but a lot of them they won't move. They live here for a thousand. They live in that apartment for a thousand years because there was it was a white couple that stayed over there. And when I tell you peaceful, quiet, oh my God. When they moved, I was hoping and praying that it would be the same thing, but it wasn't. It was just a, another ghetto people moving in. And when that happens, bye, see you later, I'm moving out. I'm telling you, if you ever in the neighborhood and the white people start to move out, you better move with them. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not trying to be smart. I'm not trying to be smart and hurt people's feelings, but I'm telling you. If you see that happening, move with them. Just move out with them because I'm telling you. When that happens, a whole bunch of ghetto people move in. And then you're going to look around. You're going to be like, wow, this neighborhood used to be so beautiful and nice. Now it's trash. They throw. Look, let me tell you something. I was driving down, down, um. What, what's it called? I think it's Diamond Springs. You know, I was uh, driving, and there's a light right there where you um where you turn. Uh, it's a green arrow turn this way to get on the next road. So I'm um behind this lady, and she throws. She was throwing trash out the uh out the window. So when I get up, so she goes that way, the airway. So when I get up there, all you see is all this soda, cans, trash, and everything where people just, you know, and she was black, just threw it out, out the uh, window. But that's just the kind of, you just have people like that. And those are the kind of people that mess up the neighborhood. They throw trash everywhere. They don't pick up after their dogs. It, it, it's just, we don't need those type of people here. You know, and then there's another generation 
because you have these people that are dirty, they're nasty, they're disrespectful, and they have a whole bunch of freaking kids. So you're going to have a generation of bum, dirty, funky kids for the next generation. And that's why a lot of the YouTubers like Cerebral, Crystal Swirl, Simply Said, um, oh my God, who else is it? Um, Leandra TV. It's a lot of them. What's that lady's name? Her name is Lee something. Lee. Hassan Campbell talks about, um, the black community. How he pretty much said it was on life support, which is true. Who else? Um. DJ Just J. You know, Tommy Sotomayor talked about it too. That's uh, why a lot of people don't like the way he uh, talks. Because he, he he is real vulgar. I say that he, he is definitely real vulgar. You know, when it comes to the black community. He'll be talking about the wigs and what. But I'm just saying, if you wear a wig... You know what I'm saying? Why do you even care what he say? If if it don't pertain to you, you know, or you don't like what he say, just don't watch his channel. I don't even think he has a channel right now. But if you don't like it, just you you are more than welcome to click off. You don't even have to watch him. If you go on that ch anybody's channel and you say, oh, I don't like what they're saying. I don't like this. Just don't watch him no more. That's all you got to do. But it's a lot of channels. But th those are just some of the channels. Um, and Anastasia Garadelli's world. I like to watch her. Um, what is it? SJ Talks. I like to watch her. She does some good commentary too. Um, I like to watch Truth Hurts, Loving God. So, um, there's a lot of channels that I like. Well, I can't name them all, but that's just a few. But a lot, a lot of those, um, oh, Cynthia G. Cynthia G talks a lot about, um, you know, the black community and what's going on. And that's to stop the next generation from, because if you see this, I mean, y'all come on, y'all see what's out here. Y'all gonna let the new y'all gonna let the newest generation fall on deaf ears like this? Do y'all know how much crime, how much just whole craziness is gonna be if you let the next generation fall to this this mess that's going on out here in these streets? That's why they talk about it. You guys don't like it, but it has to be talked about. I like to watch Rhoda Young Live too, cause she she talks a lot. She talks a lot about what's um going on in the community. She talks about the good and she talks about the bad. But yeah, that's why a lot of people talk about it. You know, it has to be talked about. There ain't nothing going to get done. And then you're going to have generation after generation after generation of thugs and, and, and whores. It's bad to say that, but I'm telling you, I see it out here all the time. And this neighborhood is a prime example. You know, there's no... There's no togetherness in this neighborhood. Everybody basically stays to herself. If anything bad is going on in the neighborhood, don't nobody say nothing. Don't nobody talk about it. And I just, uh, I can't be in a neighborhood like that. I can't be in a neighborhood like that. Yeah, but, um, Yeah, that's that's pretty much all I had to say um about that. But I'm gonna be talking about um the what the controversy going on with Sesame Place 
And I'm also going to bring y'all some a little bit of backstory about how it was created. I'm going to share some of the characters with you guys. And I'm going to tell you guys why I think that really went down. Because for real, it's not the first time that this has happened. They said now it's a lot of videos that they found of them doing this to those black children. But that's going to be on another video that I'm going to put out. So, y'all, when you come in, like and subscribe my channel. Share with all your friends and loved ones. Also, hit the bell notification so you won't miss another one of my videos. And I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm going to drop another video. If not tomorrow, it'll be... Usually, I drop videos on uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Monday be my off day. But I'll see you guys later. So, peace and have a great night.